The Firebirds have a familiar foe to face if they want to get back to the Calder Cup Finals. We are squad casting or squid casting with Ann Kimmel from Locked on Predators to get the lowdown on this year's Milwaukee Admirals. You are Locked On Kraken, your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Erica L. Ayala here, your host of Locked On Kraken with a very good friend. You know her, you love her as one of now the co-hosts of Locked On Predators and Kimmel. And you were just in my hometown. How was the Big Apple? Oh my gosh, we had a quick trip, but it was the best trip, my friends. There is a giant hot dog in Times Square. I don't know what else I can say about how amazing New York is. Giant hot dog. And once a day, Erica, confetti (laughs) shoots out the giant hot dog. You know, (laughs) that is, I have never heard that before. So, um... Yeah. Wow. Thank you for, Now's for the time that. to go to New York City. Friend. Now, I don't even know if I've I've even seen this hot dog and the confetti. There's just too many ways that could go. We're just going to keep it moving <laughs> right into hockey from there. Segway. Segway beautifully into hockey. Um, but we have our our both our teams are battling for a yeah. spot in the Kelly Cup Finals. Now, for the Coachella Valley Firebirds, they're looking to get back there. The Admirals are looking for a little bit of revenge. We were able to squad cast last year a little bit uh, about the Admirals. So let's, we've talked about this with uh, Jason J.D. Hernandez, another homie in the Locked On family. Um, But we talked a little bit about game one, but I'd love to hear from the Milwaukee perspective. You obviously had more games uh, immediately and, and, and as a part of your last series. So there was a little bit of a low for the the firebirds but how if at all did going from one series directly into another impact the admirals or do you think it will potentially impact them in this series actually feel like it is an advantage for the Milwaukee Admirals because they have had to play games right up until this series. They played the Central Division Finals against the Grand Rapids Griffins. That went to five games. Mm -hmm. So they have been playing a lot of hockey to get to this point. And I do think it can go either way. In some ways, you want the rest if you've got guys who are kind of dealing with injuries, battling something that's kind of nagging them. But I think for where the Milwaukee Admirals were at when they started playing in the postseason, this has been really good. They don't have a ton of injured players. Now, we will talk about the one major injured player they have coming up here in a second. But Mm -hmm. they didn't necessarily need the rest. And I think for them you know, battling a five game series, they had to come back from two games down against the Grand Rapids Griffins. I think that that sort of got them very focused into that playoff mindset into knowing this is exactly how we have to play and exactly what we have to do if we want a chance to beat the Firebirds this year, because they know how hard this team is to beat. They struggled last year against them. They really want an opportunity to come back in this series. Yeah, I think it's always interesting to hear what uh, coaches in particular say. I think players more often than not, especially when a series is about to start, are just going to say, hey, like, you know, can't think about that. We're just going to go into it. Now, whether that changes after the series, eh, you know. (laughs) But, um, you know, I think in that break, there was also a bit of news, which we'll talk about a little bit later on our squad cast, that, you know, could have definitely impacted how the Firebirds came out. And again, we talked with JD about that, but I would love to hear from you and thinking about game one against the Firebirds. What were some things that stood out to you from how Milwaukee played? It was a very interesting game one just from the get-go because, of course, Nashville has relied a lot on their young goaltender, Yaroslav Skarov. He is the player who is injured right now. He was injured in game four against Grand Rapids. He did not play game five. And Troy Grosnick, who is a veteran goaltender, he has played game five against Grand Rapids. Of course, he got the start in game one against Coachella Valley as well. 
in some ways, there is something comforting about having that veteran presence in that. Troy Grosnick has had a very good season. He has seen a lot of things. He has played a lot of games. So I think in game one, despite not having kind of the star goaltender, there is something calming for the Milwaukee Admirals about knowing like we've seen, they call him Goose. We've seen what Goose can do in net. He's been very, very good for the team all season long. So I think that that was okay. The one area that I think really stands out to me when you look at game one is Milwaukee has got to stay out of the box. Mm. Oh, girl, there are no snacks in the sin bin. <laughs> if I could get a tattoo, just, just oh there are no gosh. snacks. And they just consistently. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. They were dumb penalties. Mm. There were some just dumb penalties. And, and those are the things you can't give an inch at this point in the postseason. Right. And you certainly can't give an inch to a team like Coachella Valley. You know, you don't want to be playing shorthanded. You want a five on five game. I think Milwaukee liked their five on five game in game one. They just didn't play enough of it. Yeah, that definitely stands out. It's something that, again, we spoke to JD about and, uh, you know, he had some input on maybe not having played in a little while, that being indicative. And uh, and what we also talked about is the, the snacks, like people were vying for snacks early within the first 20 seconds of the game. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, and so when you're coming out of not playing, obviously, competitive hockey and you have a choppy game, Yes. You know, JD felt that that was indicative of some of what we saw from the Firebirds, that it wasn't such a quick start. Um, and we talked a lot about Chris Drieger. Um, and uh, he is definitely what is new with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. But there are also some differences and obviously some similarities and even some promotions that we have to talk about when it comes to these two teams. So we're going to get into that coming up next on the Squadcast. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time makes getting tickets super easy. You've got the NBA Finals, of course, the NHL Finals coming up. I'm going to take a look at what the prices look like for that NWSL game, uh, the Chicago Red Stars at Wrigley Field. Just a few, you know, a few events that you might want to look and use game time for because with game time, you'll find killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and the lowest price guaranteed game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Um, You know, I love the seat view. I've talked about it before. I've used it before. You get a panoramic view of the seats that you're thinking of purchasing before you make your purchase. You can see if there's any obstructions. Are you going to be, if you're at a baseball field, fully covered either from the sun or any elements, uh, rain, otherwise, I love taking a look at that. So again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets for the NBA Finals or any other event with the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Now terms do apply, but again, re- redeem code Locked On NHL. That's L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price is guaranteed. Erica L. Ayala here alongside Ann Kimmel, and this is a squad cast between the Locked On Nashville Predators podcast and the Locked On Seattle Kraken podcast. And and before we keep it moving, I just want to give Locked On Preds a shout out. Always love the humor, the sass. Of course, we love our squad cast and our squid cast. But, um, you know, it, it just seems like that has continued, even though there's a new host. You have a new co host. We do. So exciting. So have been co-hosting with Nick for several seasons. Nick has stepped away for some personal reasons. It's been great working with him, but I have the most amazing new co-host. We're having a ton of fun. Her name is Emma Lingen. She's covered the Nashville Predators for years, and we're having a great time. I will tell you, we we really are um, hitting our stride. We giggle a lot, but we know a lot of stuff too. So it's been really fun. 
I love it. Well, that just sounds like a good time and uh, cannot wait to, um, you know, here in in a regular season, once both of our teams are not licking our wounds, uh, <laughs> to hear some, some hopefully, uh, you know, good news about this Predators team. But right now, I'm sure you both are leaning into the opportunity to continue talking about playoff hockey. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So this matchup should seem very uh, familiar. It's a similar matchup if, you have any AHL diehards out there that watched the playoffs last year because it's these two exact teams that went head to head. And so, and we talked a little bit about what that's looked like in game one and what it could potentially even look like in game two, but what's new, what's new with the admirals this year? How have they been impacted? We already talked a little bit about injury, but how have they also been impacted of what's happening with the the big club, the NHL club? Yeah, it's been a really interesting year watching the relationship between the Milwaukee Admirals and the AHL and the NHL. The Nashville Predators are in what new general manager Barry Trotz said in his first season was a youth movement. They want to get younger and faster. So what that meant we thought, was that so many of these young talent in Milwaukee were going to get a long chance in Nashville with the Predators. Some of them started out with Nashville, but didn't finish the season there. And that's been a really big storyline in Nashville and for the Milwaukee Admirals. We have players like Yuso Parsonen, Phil Tomasino. Both of them were on the roster out of training camp but eventually found their way back to the AHL because head coach Andrew Brunette wanted them to get some more experience. He wanted to give them more ice time. They just weren't earning the ice time that he felt like they needed to really grow their game to get to a point where they could be consistent contributors in Mm. the NHL. So it's been a very interesting season in Milwaukee and in Nashville watching these players try to figure out where they're at in their kind of professional trajectory. It's worked out well, I think, in Milwaukee, especially now this postseason. A, like you mentioned, you've got a Milwaukee Admirals team that's been in the Western Conference Finals last season. So they've got that experience under their belt. But they also have these players who have had some NHL time and who are really, they've been personally challenged to elevate their game. Right. And I think some of that is going to spill over into what you see in this postseason with some individual players like Phil Tomasino, like you so Parson in. Yeah, that's so interesting, you know, that you talk about. Uh, I remember when we had Brett as the Edmonton Oilers uh, host, he used yeah. to say, uh, he used to call the crack an HC opportunity, right? Or <laughs> FC opportunity, I guess, you know, football club, hockey, uh, or hockey club, we remixed it, HC opportunity, right? And I think that's, it sounds like what the hope was, or maybe there genuinely was that opportunity there. And then just a little bit of a, hey, this is what's best for the development. I think Kraken and Firebirds fans can completely understand that. Mm -hmm. I think we got a lot of that with a player actually who for us has been dealing with injury, but should be back at some point for this series. And that's Shane Wright, centerman Shane Wright. Yes. We heard that a lot, you know, he did that back and forth for a really long time. And what I think was likely frustrating, certainly as a host of Locked on Kraken, is that if the plan was understood internally, it was never communicated externally. And that's not to say that you have to do that that they're under no obligation to tell us what the development plan is for Shane Wright. And it was almost the the, question that the organization must at some point have known they were going to get every single night. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, so that was interesting. That was a very interesting thing to, to witness, which in my opinion did no favors for Shane Wright. Yes. And, and his confidence, arguably, uh, because he he did have an opportunity with the NHL. You know, it was very noticeable that he was a healthy scratch for a lot of the games that he was up here. But right. then when we finally did hear from Ron Francis, it was one of those things. Well, you know, some of it was self-inflicted, he said in an interview once, um, and that he just needed to get a, a little more confidence. So what we've seen is Wright has spent almost all of the time with the Firebirds. And the reason I emphasize that is 
is because if there was a year <laughs> where we were glad to have a healthy AHL team that was not co co-parented as we did with the Florida Panthers in our first season, but was owned by the, the organization, it was this year. Yes. So many injuries, mm. so many injuries impacted the the skaters and while that did become the again that hc opportunity it also was out of necessity we just didn't have enough healthy bodies in very specific positions and that was a, a demise for sure not the total picture but certainly a demise for the um the seattle crack in this year to the point right. in where it led to a coaching change, which is also related to what's new with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Our yes, head coach. this is amazing yeah. news. This is, I mean, really everybody, I will tell you, everybody in Nashville, Milwaukee Admirals fans have really been watching this because this is an interesting move. I thought the coaching change was interesting, but at this point in the postseason for the AHL, big news coming out of Coachella Valley. Yes. And that is that during that break, the aforementioned break, right before this series, mm -hmm. the Coachella Valley Firebirds head coach, Dan Bilesma, who I talked about jokingly about co-parenting with the Florida Panthers, but we were with the Charlotte Checkers in our first AHL season. And about half of that roster then came over to Coachella Valley. But that included uh, the half of the skating roster and the head coach, because mm -hmm. Dan Bilesma or, or I should say our first head coach at Coachella Valley. Our, uh, Dan Bilesma was an assistant at Charlotte because that okay. wasn't our team where we could give a head coaching role. So we, he came on as an assistant and he said with every intention one day that he could get the Firebirds head coaching role. He did that, got them to the final in his first season and has them, you know, within one series of getting there again. And that is why he is the new head coach of the Seattle Kraken. Yes. Do, how do you will feel be. <laughs> like the timing of this? Do you feel like it affects the AHL playoffs at all? What is your read on that? Because it's just very interesting to have such a big announcement, such a big move, and he still has a very full plate with the Firebirds. Very much so. And I will say this before I answer your very, very reasonable question, that for Dan, he said this when he was in Seattle. He said it again when he was in Coachella um, and more passionately, I, in my estimation, but he has unfinished business in the Love AHL. That. Okay. He has what he feels is unfinished business. He is 100% dedicated. He almost audibly scoffed when he was asked, well, you know, some coaches, oh, I don't know, like the Chicago Sky coach uh, who just left for the NBA. I don't know. But anyway, some coaches, when they when they get a new role, they leave. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they just decide to leave. James Wade, Chicago Sky, left the Chicago Sky right before the season started to go to the Raptors. Wild. Anyway, um, uh, you know, I think that's a massive distraction, especially if it happens right. like that. If it's abrupt, that's even worse. Um, you know, that's that's really wild. And I think, you know, again, Dan Bilesma, who is the future head coach of the Seattle Kraken, has been appointed, uh, but will still be the head coach for the remainder of this series. He he said, yeah, he he was going to have to and did have to figure out how to compartmentalize. You know, right. because there's obviously you're proud. There are emotions um, and he's determined. His team is determined to do one game better than they did last year. Um, so it's definitely been interesting. I think. And JD said this on our squad cast. Uh, we call them family reunions, though, because he's actually representing the Firebirds and not the Ducks. So, OK, we'll allow okay. that. Yeah. OK, we'll thank you. That. Thank you. All right. We wanted to, wanted to get your feedback. But yeah, we we do family reunions. So it's amazing. Um, so on our reunion, our last reunion episode, um, you know, what he was saying is that as soon as Haxel was let go, Coachella Valley started talking. Okay, Bilesma's got to be on the list. Bilesma got to right. be on the list. We also have our ECHL uh, affiliate, the Kansas City Mavericks, who are also in the playoffs. They're getting to the Kelly Cup final for the first time in franchise history. And so we've been talking to Tad O'Had, who's their GM and head coach on the Locked on Kraken show. Asked him about Dan, and he was spicy with it. He was like, well, first of all, I'm paraphrasing. You can listen to his exact words on the show. But anyway, First of all, uh, he said in my head, um, 
you know, he, Tad was a little bit put out that Dan Bilesma hadn't been considered for some of the more recent head coaching changes yeah. even prior to Dave Haxtell. Yeah. Um, he was like, well, I, I, I think he should have been considered, but you know, had glowing things to say. There's so much respect that everyone has for Dan, his ability to take on a leadership role and meet success pretty quickly. We saw that even in the NHL, uh, you know, he's like, Oh, I'll be a first time head coach in the NHL and just go win the dang Stanley cup. That's what I'll do. Why not? With Pittsburgh, you know, get them to the playoffs for another, what, five or six seasons. NBD, no big deal. Um, and then the reasons that he left Pittsburgh and again, after six or so seasons and not getting back to a, a you know, a, getting a yeah. chance to win a Stanley cup, you can understand just in a business type way, why the, way the NHL works. Yep. You right. got to read. You just yep. want a change, you know, with yep. no hard feelings, truly business maneuver. But the thing that was interesting, I, I thought, Anne is in, you know, I, I did not live this history, but I learned it is that the pens had, uh, fire their GM first, which is something Kraken fans thought maybe could have happened or in some maybe should have happened before hack got the hack. Um, but, uh, um, so, it, so then Dan at that time was in a little bit of limbo with the pens. New GM comes in, new GM says, thank you so much for your service. And that's how he ends up leaving Pittsburgh, which is a little tough. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly how it went down in Nashville with John Hines, new GM, and they just kind of want to bring in their own voice. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, always tough, always tough. But uh, so we talked about some of the changes that have happened with both of these lineups. And so I guess the, the question is, uh, who are some players that we should watch? Any of the new blood or folks that are maybe establishing themselves with the admirals? Um, or will it be, you know, some players that we haven't been able to see in the NHL, at least in the case with the Firebirds and the Kraken? So we're going to talk about that coming up next. All right, and I love when there just seems to always be like this super cute synergy between Nashville slash Milwaukee and Coachella Valley. Yes. And the, the Kraken. And I feel like that's why I love these squad casts. They're just so much fun. They are so much fun. And I will tell you, we have there. I'm just going to say there is a sports media person in Nashville who says, I don't know why anybody watches the AHL. It's a, and I'm like, I'm telling you right now, if you want to know what's going to be coming into Nashville in the next two to three years under what has been called a reset, mm. you've got to be paying attention. And to this series, because yes. how the Milwaukee Admirals do in this Western Conference final against a team like the Coachella Valley Firebirds is going to change how some of these young players play in the future. This is valuable experience for them. So I am 100% here for following these young players and seeing their development in high pressure situations like, like they're bound yeah. to be in this series. Yeah, totally agree. And I mean, we didn't get into this. It went a little bit more into Bilesma, but we've seen the the evidence of that even in a short time with Coachella Valley and the Seattle Kraken. Ty Cartier had a breakout season yes. at the top of the year last year, and that fueled, again, a strong run for the Firebirds. Joey Decord, <laughs> you know, oh, Drieger, yeah. Chris Drieger is our, our goalie, our top goalie right now. And that's because he was on a, an injury stint and was doing his final part of his rehabilitation with the AHL uh, and our Firebirds. But by that time, Joey Decord had already established that he was the guy in net. And the Firebirds, the coaching staff, decided to rock with it. And this year, he beat out Drieger for that position, what was supposed to be behind Philip Grubauer, who then got injured. And so then Joey Decord became arguably, I would say not at, at all arguably, but some would say arguably our number one goalie. Right, right. And that, that so it all matters. Teams. Yes. Indeed, indeed it does. And so with that said, who are some players to watch? I do want to just say I do think Drieger is a, a player to watch, yes. especially coming from a locked on Kraken perspective. We could even go well beyond this series and to what it means if Drieger plays well or doesn't play well, for that matter, with the Firebirds, what that means for his future with the organization overall. So there's always that 
every time we see Drew. Yeah. But then it's also great. He's a great story because he's coming back from a serious knee injury that he uh, got during the IHF, you know, uh, playoffs. And, you know, that's always tough. You always want to see, at least I always want to see like that comeback story, you know? Yeah. So, and I think he's been solid. He's been really solid in net. Um, arguably, not arguably, I would say, excuse me, the best player for the Firebirds for the longest stretch of time in that first game. Uh, but who else we saw come, come alive in that game was John Hayden, who again, we have seen in a cracking uniform, mostly due to injury, but who has cut his teeth and had that time to see how things are done um, more consistently at the NHL level. I mean, we could go down the list, Podorowski, uh, Devin Shore, you know, started with the Seattle Kraken and is bringing some of that back now to the, to the Firebirds. So those are some of our players and, but who should we be looking out for on the Admiral? Admirals. I, I just every time I say admirals, I just see a refrigerator and I love it. It's the best oh, thing. It's the greatest logo ever. I'm telling you, I'm gonna hook you up one day, Erica, yes. with that refrigerator, the so awesome. refrigerator logo. It's it's iconic. It's so interesting <laughs> hearing you talk about your players to watch because they're players who have, you know, kind of gotten their feet wet in the NHL. But the player that I'm telling you that you all need to be watching is somebody who has not seen any NHL minutes mm. yet. And that is young Mr. Zachary LaRue. This is his okay. first professional season. He was a 2021 first round pick for the Nashville Predators. He played with the Halifax Mooseheads for a long, long time. And yes. one thing that you will, when people hear the name Zachary LaRue, one of the things that they instantly think about is uh, penalties. Mm -hmm. LaRue in the QMJHL ended up with several suspensions because <laughs> he plays a very physical game. <laughs> I'm looking at the box score now and I'm like, oh, Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what that big number is. <laughs> and so the Nashville Predators last season were like, we just got to get him into the AHL. He needs to play against men. And Zachary LaRue has had the most amazing trajectory over the course of the season. He is the leading scorer in the AHL in the postseason. He has nine goals in the postseason. And he is somebody who has surprised a lot of people in Nashville because he's not just that physical agitator. And, and I worry about LaRue in the sense that he might get pigeonholed Mm. because that has been his reputation, but you see him in the postseason, and I think you will see him in this series. You will see he's got a great scoring touch. This is somebody who can play with speed. He is a playmaker, mm. and he has had to learn how to keep his cool. In yeah. game one, he ended up leaving the game with a 10-minute misconduct game, misconduct for arguing a call. That's something that Zachary LaRue cannot do. But right. he is going to be a difference maker for the Milwaukee Admirals. He has really been so impressive in the postseason. And rumor is Nashville's really watching this guy. Let's see what happens in training camp. He may be the next young guy that gets a shot mm. in some NHL minutes. Another player I would say to watch is Igor Afanasyev. And this is somebody who Nashville had big, big plans for. His NHL time has been limited and maybe not been what fans expected necessarily from him. 2019 second round pick. He is very much beloved. He is a fan favorite. He's got a ton of charisma, but he has been very good in the playoffs and he's played a lot with Yuso Parson and who is one of the players that had some time in Nashville and ended up in the mm -hmm. AHL. So Igor Afanasyev, Yuso Parson, and those are two offensive weapons to keep your mm -hmm. eye on. And let me give you a defenseman. Oh, let yes. Two defensemen. Love let me it. give you two. Spencer Stasny, who I mm -hmm. expect will be a full-time NHLer next season probably the best skater in the entire Nashville Predators organization, top to bottom. Mm. And then Ryan Ufko, Ryan Ufko joined the team late in the season after, after finishing up his collegiate season, not necessarily a big physical presence. I like to call him fun sized. He's a fun sized <laughs> defenseman, but he has just melted into this professional hockey seamlessly, very smart player, very good defensively, uh, great at uh, kind of kicking off some offensive opportunities too. So for me, there are a couple players who could use this series to really make a name for themselves and open the door a crack to some NHL minutes as well. But again, nothing about this series is easy. It's going to take best game up and down this lineup.
for them to get ahead of Coachella Valley. I agree with you. I was excited that we were going to play the admirals again because I knew that this meant that this was going to happen. On, girl. It's personal. <laughs> you know? So I knew yep. this. I was like, oh, my God. Yes. Yes. And then I was like, oh, 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 okay. Because, you know, this was a tough series last year. So tough last season. Yep. It was really tough. Yeah. This was a tough series and this is a different, I, I, and we both kind of talked about it, but you know, there are differences to this team. Um, that being said, I think that it's, it's going to be potentially tougher or tighter in some areas. That being said, I like the tool kit that this Firebirds team has. I think that they can, and this is kind of my, you know, the, the Coachella Valley Firebirds will win if they can keep things on their side, uh, you know, stay f with five men out, uh, you know, five skaters out. You right. really do not want to be on the PK. Uh, they've been able to be fine, you know, even better than they were in the regular season on special teams overall, but especially like looking at the penalty kill, which they've had to use a decent amount. Uh, but I think if, again, at least some of that goes to goaltending, I really want to see them just continue to focus on the composure and poise. I think this is a team that is a little bit more well-balanced at times. Although even Chris Drieger joked about after the game, he's like, yeah, well, I knew if I let one in that that would wake up the offense and he's like <laughs> and he said that and he was, he was joking and the, the part that makes it funny is because he was also serious and saying yeah unfortunately I was right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, you know, because there's still a little bit of an Im immaturity. I, I, that's how I categorized it last year. Mm -hmm. I think there's less of that. And it's just, you know, hey, you, you have to put in the work to to be focused for, you know, a, a full 60 and then some depending on how the game goes. That's hard work that not a lot of people talk about. You think it would be easy. But it's not always, no. um, depending on if the bounces aren't going your way, if there's a fatigue, if, you know, their emotions are running high. And so I think being able to stay fluid so that they can go back to that muscle memory, you're not having to think about everything. You're not like, OK, or like a John Hayden, like, OK, am I on the PK now? Am I on the PP now? You know, what am I doing here? Are we at even strength? Like what's there's just so many other things that when you have a choppy game. Yes. Like game one, like game one was, it just becomes a little tough. So that's what I would like to see. What's your key? The Admirals take game two if. The Admirals are going to take game two if they can keep it to a five on five game. They came out in their post game interviews and they talked about the fact that they felt really good about that game. And I think they should feel good about that game. Last year, it felt a little bit like this team w was growing a little painfully through the Coachella mm. Valley series in that it almost felt like Coachella Valley was, you know, way up here and, and the admirals were trying to get there. And I think game one made them feel like we are as good a team. Interesting. Yeah. We are as good a team. We made some dumb mistakes, but if we clean up those mistakes, we like our game. So I think five on five game is going to be huge. The other X factor in this series is will Yaroslav Askarov return in net? And mm. there is no indication one way or the other so far from Carl Taylor, whether he will or not again, injured in game four against Grand Rapids have not heard, but I don't know that that is an outcome that will change the series because I think this mm. team trusts Troy Grosnick in net. That's um, interesting. So it will be interesting to watch and see whether Askarov comes back in. If not, I don't know that the admirals feel like they're at a disadvantage, but they do want to keep it five on five. That's so interesting because you made me think again, back to Shane Wright, who again is expected at some point in this series. We did yes. not see him in game one. Um, and so could maybe be in game two. And the reason that I think that matters is because I love that we're both talking about the same thing in that, you know, we know that both of these teams are playing differently. And to your point that the admirals absolutely can take this game. So it's going to take a different counter move than just the physical game that we saw last season, arguably to beat this right. admiral squad. And honestly, 
that's that's the of ev the evolution of the firebirds as well and so to that end i think the way that this firebirds team plays it does show off shane wright a little bit more how they played this year this right. season because he is a, a skilled centerman he can definitely go get get the puck but his i think his bread and butter um and he might not always be a centerman because he has such a knack for the net he uh can find the puck very very well and we've seen that time after time for the firebirds that he's been able to come up whether it's you know picking up garbage time goal in the front yep. of the net just because he's trailing as that centerman right because he's just hunting the puck always whether it's making a good play behind the net to you know reset uh the offense i mean there are just so many things that shane wright has been able to do and it's again he grows with this very young ahl team you know this is only the second year of the Firebirds and for some of these players three years as affiliated to the Seattle Kraken but right. this is still very new which is why it's definitely bittersweet it's bittersweet for Firebirds fans for sure to have Dan Bilesma moving on yeah. but I think that's also the, the, the sweet part of that is why there's excitement in Seattle because I think that Bilesma coming and maybe one or more of his assistants. I mean, Jessica Campbell's at the top of my list. I'm just Let's saying, go. Um, Let's go. we can talk about that in the off season. We'll see what happens. Um, but one or more of his assistants is going to come with him. And this is, I loved that Dan in particular was described as someone who he will have fun. I mean, his nickname is disco Dan. So there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm one day I'm going to get him on the record and tell that story to me. Um, but uh, <laughs> I want to know, I want to know the real story from Dan himself. Those are my goals. Those are my professional journalistic <laughs> podcasting goals. I love it. <laughs> uh, and then what's his favorite disco song? Um, so, I, I, you know, I think that it opens the door for Shane Wright. It mm -hmm. opens the door for a more permanent um, time with Riker Evans, who also spent a lot of time with the Seattle Kraken. Right. Um, you know, I think it really opens the door wide open for some of those players that were maybe on the cusp. And it's also coming at a perfect time because the Seattle Kraken need to move a few things around, <laughs> given that we went from being one game, a one win away from the Western Conference Finals to crashing and burning terribly in just a season. So it's yeah. going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting for sure. Yeah, and so much that happens, again, in this series with these two teams in particular, with some very specific players, so much is going to matter, not just in this series, not just in the Calder Cup finals, Who you know, whoever gets there, but this series could have repercussions for both yes. NHL teams, and I think that makes it really great viewing, yep. great hockey great hockey Indeed, because then you can be that super duper well knowledge fan that says oh I, I i remember them when they played right. firebirds those two years <laughs> back to back All that's right. right i remember shane Wright since before his first playoff beard <laughs> come on <laughs> you know like that's you know right. those are the things you can say that and it happens you can watch on ahl uh, uh ahl tv and then also usually we'll get some of those on our um local affiliate for the Seattle Kraken. Although we just changed. We got we're gonna be uh we got a new affiliate actually, which is in the Tegna family of no all kidding. Things. And yeah, we talked about that. It's kind of wild, but either way, Anne and I will have you covered for the remainder of this series. Of course, you can listen in and follow along with your respective AHL team, whether it be the Milwaukee Admirals or, of course, the Coachella Valley Firebirds. And then you can also follow Locked on Predators and Locked on Kraken for the updates. But for Ann Kimmel, Erica L. Ayala here. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another, and hopefully we'll catch you on another Squadcast soon. Peace out, everybody.